Paul and Drums here at ChuckLevins.com. Wanted to highlight a product line that while we've sold for many years here at Chuck Levins Washington Music Center, has really caught on um, of late amongst not just jazz players, but a broad range of players from gospel to fusion to indie rock. And that is the Istanbul Agap line. I've also heard it pronounced Istanbul Agap. There have been many uh, Turkish cymbal brands uh, that have um, came and went, though Istanbul has stayed around a while, uh, has solidified their series, uh, and even has a more budget series uh, called Exist. If you are interested in any of these or any of the many other Istanbul products we carry, you can check us out at chucklevins.com. That's it. It's a great microphone. It sounds amazing. It is, it's hard to get pretty excited about a microphone release these days, but this is really a game changer. And in the world of microphones, you know, to get something that sounds this good, um, that has this many features from a brand like Shure is remarkable. The SM7B certainly still has its place in the world. It is a legend. It is definitely not to be left behind. But for the world that we find ourselves in today, the MV7 is phenomenal. And coming in at only $249 when the SM7B is set as $399, this is an incredible value. It sounds great. It looks great. It has tons of features. And it also comes in two colors. So you get a little style style picking out for you. Comes in silver, comes in black. Both are available right now. Chucklevins.com. Time to get yours. Gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Cause baby, I feel real good and I wish I would. It's gotta be against the law to look this damn good. Everybody watch out. Watch out now. I'm ready for a good time. And I came to groove. The whole band's here and we came to move. Got a fresh haircut and two new shoes. We're here all night like we got nothing to lose. Coming out the jacket, cause we're turning up the heat. I wanna see you clapping when you get up out your seat. It's time to make it happen when we hit these streets. I'm coming in hot and I can't be beat. Watch out now. Chuck Levin's yeah, live. Man. Chuck Levin's live. Hello, world. I'm Adam Levin. Got the man. Sam Burton is here in the drum department. How's Howdy. it going, Sam? Great. Nice, going awesome. nice shirt. Nice shirt you got there. Thank you. I like your yeah, shirt, check too. Check those out. Check those out. Available soon on ChuckLevins.com. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We got a great one tonight. Um, we are going to dive into the world of drumsticks, which on the surface might sound pretty, uh, pretty simple, but... This is pretty cool. This is like, you know, Sam and I actually had a pretty cool discussion about it today. We we're talking about, you know, what's the importance of a drumstick and how significant it is. And it's really significant. This is the drummer's contact point to the drum. This is this is how you are engaging with the instrument. This is this is part of it. This is this is like the, the guitar pick for the guitar player. This is essential to performance. Um, I'm excited to learn a lot. We had a great talk today, Sam. Mm -hmm. um, we great. got some cool giveaways, too, as usual. Sam, why don't you show us what we're what we're giving away today? So our guests today, Vic Firth, have been gracious enough to join us in giving away a set of their new Remix brushes. If you look real close, if you squint real hard into the stream, there's actually two pairs in here, grass pair and birch pair. We're giving away three sets of these. Ooh. Adam, how Ooh, do they enter? Three sets. How do they three win Three sets. These? There are lots of ways to win them. The guys in the stream are going to, behind the scenes, are going to drop the link into the comments. All kinds of ways to enter. Don't be shy. It's free sticks. If you're a drummer, great. If you know a drummer, also great. Just do it. There's no harm in trying. You might win something today, this Wednesday. So give it a shot. Um, they're going to drop that link in there, and you'll just have all kinds of ways to win. And we'll announce them at the end of the stream, as we usually do. Um, and guys... We have, you know, we got guys from the company themselves in the stream. So um, don't be shy and ask questions. Um, you know, nothing's off limits. We'll, we'll get to everything that we can. We'll have some fun. But I think uh, without further ado, let's bring in Mike from Vic Firth. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's it going? 
How's it going, Mike? It's going well, going well, uh, weathering the year that is 2020. So, you know, can't complain too much, but uh, how are you guys doing? We're doing great. Good. We're doing great. We're here, you know, making music, doing the thing. That's right. Um, You know, it's one way to get through. So, (laughs) um, Mike, why don't you share us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and and who you are in Vic Firth and kind of catch us up to speed. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Happy to. So, uh, yeah, my my official title at Vic Firth is kind of a kind of a mouthful, but uh, I am the global brand manager of Vic Firth sticks, mallets, and alternative implements. It barely fits on a business card. Uh, <laughs> I, I and I'm also the brand manager over Balter Mallets, which uh, you know Zildjian company acquired you know about two years ago now. Um, so I've been with the company for a little over a year and a half. Uh, didn't come from uh, the music industry. I uh, actually worked the last you know four years or so in the consumer packaged goods world, selling things and marketing things like, you know, diapers and, and toilet paper. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> as exciting as those those things are, you know, I'm I'm a you know passionate drummer. I've been playing drums for over 20 years. You know, well over half my life, and you know, borderline obsessed with with all things drum related. So right. uh, it was, welcome you know, to the welcome to the real world. Yes, yes, the real world <laughs> it is. But uh, just I mean. Feel like I just stepped into a dream job and couldn't be happier, you know, to be to be working at uh, Zildjian and, and and Vic Firth. Just incredible brands, incredible community of artists and drummers and and you know retailers. So yeah, super excited to be here as well. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Awesome. I mean, Vic Firth is, and I'm speaking from a not drummer, and I'll let Sam chime in more. I mean, Vic Firth is the name in sticks. I mean, if you're going to be a drummer, like this is this is it. This is the pinnacle. This is what you play with. Yeah, I mean it's it's uh, and it's it's uh, I'd say it's it's humbling and super exciting to be kind of at the at the helm with a great team here at the company to continue to push that legacy of of excellence and greatness and quality and um, you know what Vic Firth established so many years ago you know almost sixty years ago now so yeah we're uh, we're we're plugging away and and trying to trying to keep it fresh and and uh, you know make the best possible you know mallet sticks implements and everything for for musicians out there. Well, let's let's dive in. I mean, let's let's yeah. talk. Let's talk stick. Let's let's go into this thing. Tell <laughs> tell us, you know, enlighten me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I can I can walk like we can nerd out, you know, go real deep on the whole stick making process. And yes, uh, please. I, I, yeah, <laughs> let's nerd. We're ready. Yeah, let's go. Sure. So, We're here. Um, OK, so, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's really I mean, it's it's like an art and a science, honestly, the drum making process. It's, uh, it's, I guess it's kind of this combination of, of, you know, advanced technology, but still with that, that human touch and that human element. You know, I remember the first time that I walked into the, the stick factory up in Maine and, uh, I felt like, you know, I had, I had won the, the golden ticket to Wonka's Chaka factory. It was just, it was, <laughs> amazing. It was amazing. And just so like he's mentioned at the top of the, the live stream here, there's so much more that goes into a stick and it's a lot more important than I think people realize. So again, I'll go into, I'll walk you through the steps of the process. And if, uh, if I'm going off the rails, just jump in and stop me. Cause there's a lot, a lot to be said about the Let's process. Let's go there. Let's do this thing. Awesome. So, yeah, so there's, you know, 10, 11 steps in, in the process. And I'd say before, you know the the wood even shows up at our factory in Maine. It, the 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 key thing from the beginning is is sourcing. You know the best drumsticks come from the the best wood, and so we responsibly source our our hickory from our sawmill in the uh, southeastern United States, where the hickory is grown, cut, and then turned into squares. We call them. I got a little prop here so mm. you guys can see that. So this <laughs> is basically you know what it shows up to our door like this on on pallets and pallets every week. And uh, what's what's really neat is. Um, you know the the wood is checked for quality before it even gets to our door several times at the at the sawmill and not every type of wood is is great for drumsticks not even every type of hickory honestly is great for making drumsticks so uh you know it might be great for cabinets or a wood floor but um we we look for wood and we use wood that is specifically ideal for making great drumsticks what makes um, what makes wood good for drumsticks cuz like finding good wood is is like hot topic in in musical instrument with drums guitars yeah. sticks yeah. i mean it all matters and it matters a lot i mean it, it is make or break for these things and we, sam and i are talking about you know it's not the same type of good that you would for for a guitar or a drum shell it's a totally different set of criteria that makes a stick a stick wood drum you know yeah. drum worthy so what yeah, what sure. defines good versus bad bad wood for a drumstick yeah, it, it's, it's funny you use the phrase make or break because with drumming that that is literally it is it's 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 make or break. So what makes good wood for a drumstick? 
you know, it's 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 not necessarily like using tone woods like you would for a guitar or a cello or something like that, um, where it needs to kind of have that, that beautiful vibration and resonance. With drumsticks, it's all about, you know, the density of that wood and the durability of that wood. And, uh, you know, everyone wants a drumstick that, that lasts as long as possible. And there's there's so many nuances to that. So I mentioned that all types of even hickory are, are good for drumstick wood. I think there's 14, 15 different species of hickory and only a handful are that kind of level of density and have the grain structure needed to make a really good drumstick that's going to be straight that's going to be you know uh, dense enough that it'll last but doesn't you know vibrate the heck out of your hands when you're playing so it's it's really a, a balance um and i think it's not just the wood the wood is obviously one very important part of it but it's the the process and how the wood is is treated and what we what we do once we get you know this square into our manufacturing facility, the steps that we take after that, that really make it what we call, you know, the perfect pair, that ideal drumstick. Take us through it. So what happens, yeah. what happens next? You get, you get this, you get the square. Yep. So we get, like I said, you know, pallets and pallets of those squares delivered every week and they immediately go into our onsite kilns uh, to begin the kiln drying process. Kilns you know, basically just a giant, giant, you know, oven essentially. Uh, and it's, it's a long, slow process. I mean, uh, takes roughly two weeks of drying in that, in those kilns because we're trying to slowly uh, ensure that we're relieving all the little stresses in the wood and making sure that it's not going to, you know, splinter or split or crack or warp or anything like that. Because you hear in drumsticks a lot, um, and this kind of goes back to your question about, you know, good wood versus, versus not so good wood for drumsticks. Wood, of course, is a natural material. And every piece of wood has a certain um, moisture content. You hear moisture content, that phrase thrown around a lot in drumsticks. So the higher the moisture content, the, the heavier, the more dense that wood is going to feel. But the downside to that is as soon as the climate or temperature or humidity changes, that moisture is going to change and that wood will have a tendency to warp. And I don't care how strong or how durable the drumstick is, if it's not straight, it's going to feel terrible to play. Um, and so on the opposite side, if you have too little moisture content, the sticks, uh, they feel light, they dry out, they lose that strength and, and that, that density. And so at Vic Firth, what we do is we, and that's the whole point of the kiln drying process, is we get the woods down to a, between 6 and 8% moisture content. And that's the same levels that uh, like high-end, very fine furniture manufacturers use. Um, you, you think about it, I know this happens to me all the time in my house, the, when the seasons change, the doors kind of get stuck a little bit or the drawers in the dresser get stuck a little bit with really, really high-end furniture. It doesn't happen and that's because they use this similar type of level of moisture content so the the sticks are always in the, with that con moisture content perfectly straight incredibly consistent the wood is really straight before it even starts to look like a drumstick you know even in, even in this we're checking for for straightness and making sure it's got that moisture content to uh to be you know more usable and a better drumstick down the line so does that have an impact also the the grain pattern in the blanks that you get uh is that something you look out for because like sticks do have variations in grain but obviously you guys probably aren't looking for highly figured like right artfully you know like visually pleasing woods because that you know the grain is an irregularity right you can't really plan for how that's going to behave once it contacts yep. a symbol or a rim on a drum set right yep 100 percent. so like i mentioned before it this you know this type of hickory might look great for a cabinet or beautiful with the figured, you know, wood on the on grains on, on a, you know, a hardwood hickory floor or something. But yeah, for a stick, you don't want that. You want kind of what you, you know, just straight. And so, yeah, we absolutely check for that. And that's, that comes later on in the process. So uh, we, I'll kind of walk you through and I'll definitely get to answering that question. So we have this, uh, these squares that come in and um, so they come in and they, the first kind of station they go to is molding and doweling. So they go from the square they're shaved down to a slightly smaller, cleaner square, and then they're turned into this, dowels. So it's just kind of a long, you know, skinny dowel, not very great drumstick just yet, but, uh, but it's starting to kind of take that, take that shape. And at this point, uh, to your question, um, this is where every single dowel is checked for straightness as well as for weight. So anything in the, you know, right at the very beginning, anything that is not perfectly straight or anything that's too light, that's going to make a, you know, kind of a, a not so great to play drumstick. All that stuff is rejected from the production process right out of the gate. Is that um, done eyeballs or is that, or is there machines that, that check it for straightness and awesomeness? 
Uh, so it's at different points throughout the process. It's either it's either uh, you know some some technology or by actual you know, human human touch, humans like eyeballing and, and looking at the grain pattern. So it, it depends on where in the process. But yeah, it's again it's a combination of both. So we have you know those elements of you know innovation technology helping us, but we also have actual you know human hands touching it uh, throughout the the whole process. So nothing's missed. Um, Super cool. Yeah, it's it is it is like I said, it's it's an art and a science, and it's it's kind of that cool balance. But um, yeah, what what I want to mention too with that that wood, it's it's rejected, and uh, if it's not super straight, and if it's not uh, it's, if it's too light, but that the wood that's rejected doesn't go to waste. I want to make sure to, to to mention, you know, we don't we don't waste that wood. It actually um, goes to it gets burned uh, to use, and it's used to heat the factory or run our onsite kiln. So really, there's there's no waste, oh, cool. which is super important for for us as a company. Generally speaking, you know, trying to you know sustainable practices and all that kind of stuff. So nothing's wasted. The same with like when you shave it down, like the same like the whatever's left off from the from the you know from the square to the dowel. Yeah, like, well, kind of like the sawdust tattoo. and all that. Yeah, yeah. So um, sawdust, we have this kind of state of the art sawdust collection system that takes that all out of the the air. Uh, and also, um, we'll take we'll take the you know sawdust waste and we'll send it out to be turned into pellets that can be used um, in you know sawdust pellet stoves to you know again nothing nothing's wasted so it's all it's all you know copacetic in, in that way. I always thought that was super God, interesting with all, all the people that use you know that 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 manufacture using wood find really interesting ways to source it but also use it you know throughout the process in different ways and keep it sustainable yep. and keep it you know keep it moving no no yeah. waste no waste needed it's great especially for music sure. i find it's, i bet it's not quite the same in a lot of other industries but in, it's pretty cool to see that happen uh in companies like this it's great it's really cool stuff yeah yeah totally yeah we 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 definitely you know that's that's top of mind for sure throughout the throughout the process and there's other parts of the process we'll get into where we use you know a ton of water but you know 96 percent of it um is is saved and repurposed and um you know it's interesting kind of taking a step back to the sourcing hickory the hickory trees that we use for every tree that's harvested two and a half trees grow in its place. Hmm. And so like there's, there's been consistent increases in, in hickory growth um, and, you know, forestation growth. So there's, you know, those trees are going to be around for generations to come, which is, which is great. So another thing about hickory, that's, that's really, really important and, and how we source that. Super cool. Um, yeah. So, okay. So you get the, you get the dowels and the ones that make it through, they're perfectly straight. They're, you know, they're within, within the right weight range. They go to uh, what's called the checking station. And this is where, um, this is actually like a hands-on deep quality inspection by a group of people that are looking at these all day long. Um, and uh, so after, you know, they're, they're weighed, they're checked for straightness and they go to this checking station and they're looking at the color of the, of this, of the wood. They're looking at the straightness of the grain, the grain structure, you know, two to three different times and sorting them into to different groups based on, based on that. Um, one thing that uh, I didn't know that they did until I went and visited and saw it firsthand was um, it's really interesting. The checkers actually, uh, they will orient the dowel so that the straightest and therefore really strongest grain and strongest part of the stick is going to turn into uh, down the line in the process going to turn into the tip half of the drumstick. So you think about really where you're whaling on the stick and the rim shot area and on the neck and under symbols and things like that. It, uh, that's where it needs the most reinforcement, the most strength. And so you'll see the checkers back there flipping the sticks over, doing stick flips on the line, and uh, they're orienting so the strongest part of the stick is actually the tip side, which is just really, really uh, a cool touch, I think. And every stick that comes off the line has that, uh, you know, they orient it that way. It's really cool. That's fascinating. So it's not it's not even just like keeping the grain parallel with the way the stick is being cut, but literally they're designating, okay, this part is going to be where the tip is and this part is where the butt end is. Exactly. Yep. And, I mean, some, sometimes it's uniform and it's great and straight all the way through and that's the right. hope, but uh, not all the time. And if it's like, this is going to be a perfectly good drumstick, but you know, this side's probably going to be a little, little bit uh, stronger. I'm going to flip it over and boom, that's going to be the, the tip right. side. that's going to take the brunt of the, the punishment yeah. once it gets into a drummer's hands. Yeah. Yeah. And hold up after rim shot, after rim shot, after rim yes. shot, after rim exactly. shot, after rim shot. After rim shot. <laughs> 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 oh, you've played drums before, haven't you? <laughs> Once or twice. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know I've, I've another kid with a pair of pair of Vicks before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. So the, the next step after that, so once it's it's checked and it's like, okay, it's it's good to go, it's ready to be, you know, you know, turned into an actual 
drumstick, uh, it goes to the grinding uh, station. And, and grinding, uh, centerless grinding using uh, using grinding stones is something that Vic pioneered in in the drumstick world. Um, before, you know, a lot of companies, and some still do, they use back knife lathes, and that's that's one way to do it. But there's a lot of advantages to stone grinding. And let me lift this thing up and show you guys. <laughs> so this is this is a grinding stone, and okay. uh, and you can see it's actually it grinds in the profile of the tip. It's like a oh, yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm going to put this down because it weighs like 25, 30 pounds. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so each each stick model has two stones, one that grinds and shapes the butt end of the stick, uh, and one like that I showed you that grinds the the tip shape and the tip profile of the stick. And uh, it's it's basically like just like a giant, super heavy duty piece of sandpaper. And uh, it's, it's like I said, there's a lot of advantages to it. Um, Compared to you know a back knife lathe, centerless grinding is is going to be a lot more accurate, a lot more consistent profiles. Now, if you think about uh, knives, you know knives get dull over time, of mm -hmm. course, and so the first pair of sticks coming off the line from one back knife is going to look and feel very different than the last pair coming off that knife before it needs to get changed. Sure, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, plus, you know, with centerless grinding, there's no need to sand off kind of the the ends or the the nubs of the tip or the butt, so we actually get much more consistent tip shapes mm -hmm. um which is you know obviously super important when you want to get really great sounds out of your out of your cymbals especially so um yeah it's uh it's quite the process but um and we have i mean just racks and racks of these because we have so many stick models and each one uses um you know different different uh, grinding stones yeah it's wild to me because because with the the lathes you can dial them in for different models so one lathe in theory could make multiple different stick profiles but you have yeah. to have a grinding wheel two grinding wheels for every single model in the catalog well so not necessarily because yeah so there's it, it depends on how unique that profile is um mm -hmm. because there is there's definitely some play within the machinery so you know uh, a 5a for example might use the same stone as an extreme 5a because it's just an extra half inch in length right so oh the, which the may be added to the, the butt or shape. something yeah exactly yeah. So the uh the taper and the tip shape and all that stuff is is consistent but there's sure. an extra half inch of length and so you just kind of adjust the machinery and dial it in and, and boom there you go so yeah not to downplay there's still like i said there are racks and racks of that's these still, yeah that's still a ton um, <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah there's still a ton because i mean we have 200 plus models of, of drumsticks on the Vic brand alone, which is kind of bonkers, but um, you know, every, every drummer's hands are just a little bit different. Every feels a little different. So we want to, yep. you know, support that as, as uh, you know, our drummers and artists, but uh, yeah. So this, these grinding stones are, they're on, sitting on some very strong shelves up there in Newport, Maine. <laughs> um, Before we get too far off of the, oh, yeah. uh, like in the creation process, we got a great question from um, one of our, regulars tyler is asking um what are the benefits of using hickory over something like oak yeah so it it really just depends on on the the feel and uh you know the sound that you're going for so hickory is is really the standard you know 90 percent of drumsticks are made with hickory because it's incredibly durable but still has enough you know flex and feel that it's not gonna you know vibrate the heck out of your hands um but the benefit i'd say of oak i'll give you kind of the pros and cons the pro of oak is that it is super dense super hard incredibly durable so dur more durable than hickory but because it's so durable and so dense it's a lot more rigid and so if something's that rigid it's naturally going to vibrate into your your fingers hand wrist forearm and uh it's not does, doesn't happen to everybody but typically you'll get more fatigue the longer you play with an oak stick versus a hickory stick but again the huge benefit there is oak is is more durable yeah and it really that that's you kind of hit the nail on the head where really that's going to be a, a big factor of whether you like them or not and can benefit from them or not it's more a technique thing than a this is a better stick than that stick is exactly and another thing i will say in the in the pro column for for oak and it's not you know perceptible to everyone but to the trained ear like a cross stick sound of an oak stick or like the crisp cymbal sound of an oak stick it's because it is a little more dense uh, it, it does sound pretty dang good uh, mm -hmm. cross sticks and, and cymbal sounds but um again you know if you're if you're playing on a stage or if you're unless you're doing some really close miking or recording nobody else might hear it but you mm -hmm. um but hey that's that's not nothing right nope <laughs> <laughs> um 
Yeah. So I guess uh, once, once the sticks are, I guess, as the sticks are ground, cause I want to, I want to drive this home too. Um, every, literally every 15 minutes, the operators on the grinding station, uh, every 15 minutes, they're checking uh, the sticks uh, with a micrometer to like the one thousandth of an inch. Uh, so again, just crazy attention to, to quality and detail. And that happens throughout the, the grinding process. And then even after the grinding process is done, uh, the sticks are, are given another full quality inspection to make sure there aren't any, you know, weird inconsistencies or rips or, you know, anything like, you know, any kind of chunks out of the wood that just kind of randomly can happen from time to time. But mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, so they're checked again before they go on to the next stage. So, um, oh, was there a question? No, no, yeah, keep keep going. Okay, Take I'm just going to yeah, I'm just gonna plow ahead, man. I'm 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 nerding out full full on. Oh, I'm I'm right here with you. <laughs> um, so okay, so the the next step after the stick is ground and like I said, it's actually like hey, it actually starts to look like a drumstick. Ooh. Um, it, it goes to our our tumbling station, and so tumbling is uh, basically we have these giant barrels that a, a big batch of sticks gets put into with um, a coating of just a real thin layer of, of clear lacquer and that as it spins it evenly coats the sticks but another thing that it does is it smooths out any kind of small roughness or imperfections in the sticks so after tumbling uh, they come out and the sticks are already feeling you know great in your hands and and we you know we'll talk about it a little bit later there's some some series we have that have a ton of extra lacquer some that have no lacquer but uh, majority of our sticks just get this kind of thin clear coat of of lacquer yeah and it's not so it's not sprayed it's it's sort of like kind of in those Tumble barrels on. it gets it gets applied as they kind of fall through it exactly so if you picture like a if you ever had like a rock tumbler when you were a kid it's like yeah. that same kind of thing just on a much bigger <laughs> bigger scale yeah, that's what i was uh, imagining okay yep. cool yeah exactly yeah. exactly so yeah we're, we're we're on the same wavelength <laughs> <laughs> if only we had matching shirts that's what i'm saying <laughs> we'll have to, have to get we can one make of that, that happen yeah. we'll, have to, we'll, have, we'll have to do a, a shirt trade there you go <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so, going to be a prerequisite uh, for all future streams. There we go. We must trade branded t-shirts. <laughs> um, okay, so after after they're tumbled, now again, it's in that, that stick form, of course, because it's been ground and then tumbled. There is yet another quality check. So looking for you know any inconsistencies or issues, any cosmetic problems, anything like that. So all that stuff is, is checked another time before it goes to the next step. So after it's tumbled, it goes to finishing. That's the next next step in the process. Uh, in a couple different directions this could go. If uh, if a stick is going to be painted or um, or given like a Vic grip, like the rubberized grip, it'll mm -hmm. go to a dipping tank. And so uh, you know, at Vic Firth, all of our tips are are clear, meaning there's no stain or no paint on them. Because you know, we don't want people feeling like you know they don't want to mark up their drum heads and cymbals and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we have this series of of fixtures that essentially hold the the stick by the neck or by the tip and yeah. an operator will lower them down and then as they come up there's just this beautiful clean nice you know uniform finish of paint uh mm -hmm. on the stick so um again that's only if they're they're painted or they're getting that big grip will they go through that process right yep uh from there it uh all the sticks they'll go to the stamping station so um Again, and after after the finish is applied, there's another quality check for cosmetics there. But they go to um, the stamping station, and this is this is pretty straightforward. They this is where the sticks are going to get their logos, their artwork, all that stuff. And we use um, all the Vicks first sticks use ink based pad printing. So there's an automated machine that prints, you know, the the uh, the black portion of the stick. Oh, there you got there you got the freestyles. Nice. That prints the black portion of the stick, and then as they move down the conveyor belt, there's another pad that comes and prints the red and aligns everything nice and perfectly. Hopefully, um, and then uh, and you know that's another thing that the operators on uh, on the stamping stations are are checking again for artwork clarity and alignment and things like that. So again, all along the all on the way, every step, pretty much, there's some sort of quality check. Um, the next couple steps, kind of getting towards the end here, are uh, are really where it gets gets pretty you know pretty awesome, pretty nerdy. Is uh, the, so the very next step is is weight sorting, uh, and this is another you know another part of the process that Vic innovated that Vic started. So the finished sticks go basically down this conveyor belt, and they're sorted into bins by this machine in two gram increments. Okay. So you're running, let's say you're running, you know, thousands of five A's down this machine, everyone within a certain range, you know, it's not terribly wide range, but within a range, uh, you know, each single stick has a different weight. And so it's by two gram increments, it's going down and getting uh, collected in these bins. 
And then from there, it goes to our uh, pitch pairing station. So there's a whole you know separate machine where, again, it's kind of a conveyor belt style machine where each stick is struck three times with this little like mallet, little hammer um, as the stick rotates. And there's a little microphone uh, that feeds into a computer program that instantly reads the tone or pitch of that stick. And wow. again, as it goes down the conveyor belt, it kicks that stick into a bin of sticks that have that same pitch or that same tone. Yeah. Um, and what's, what's interesting is uh, looking back at the history of this, when Vic first started, uh, he, he discovered that this was a thing just by accident. He was carrying a, you know, a box of sticks and he dropped it on the floor of his garage. And he noticed, hey, because he's a you know, classically trained music, musician, he hears a bunch of different pitches and tones from the sticks. And he's like, oh, each piece of wood has a different pitch to it. And so from there was born this idea of pitch pairing and pitch matching sticks. Um, you know, and he used to have a whole team of people doing it. I don't know, not that it sounds like bigger than it was, but a couple of people in, you know, in his basement, pitch pairing sticks by hand. Um, and that's that's how it all started. Obviously a little bit more sophisticated now with this, this machine using microphones and computers and software and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess, so if you, if you take a step back at the whole process and think, so it's like, so now you've got these perfectly straight sticks that are nearly identical in weight, that are nearly identical in pitch, that have been just rigorously quality checked from, from start to finish. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons why, you know, Vic referred to this as the perfect pair, because not only is, you know, you think of the perfect pair as you know, it's the perfect pair for me. It feels perfect for my hands and my drumming and my music and my creativity um, and my connection to the stick and the instrument, like you guys talked about at the, the start of the live stream. But it's literally those sticks are paired perfectly together. Yeah. And it's, um, it's you know, whatever you base your criteria on, there are some drummers that may not care about the exacting weight uh, right. or the, for the pitch matching, but they want it to be straight. And like, so if you are hypersensitive to things like that pitch difference, if you're a vi- you know, if you're a concert snare drummer or yep. whether you're in school or professional, you need your left hand and your right hand to be exactly the same pitch. You know, that's going to be super important to you. If you're a super sure. blaze and jazz player. You need your sticks to be weighted equally. You know, so and if you yep. need all, all that stuff, you know, it's, it's the, it's, these are the sticks for you. Beyond the weight, the, will the pitch have an impact on the sound? Like, how, what 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 am I going to hear with a with a with a stick that's pitched higher or lower? You know, and and can can pitch vary within the same weight? Like, is it has it, is it other things about it that that define the pitch of a stick? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like the grain and all that sort of stuff, like it all kind of impacts how that's going to how the tone is going to sound. For sure. So that's why, like, as the sticks are going down that pitch pairing, they're all it's all the same weight, but you know, already different, different pre-sorted. Pitches. Yeah. Yep. So I don't, this probably won't work through the, the my, 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 uh, <laughs> my headset microphone, but I don't know if you ever do this, but if you take a pair of sticks, this is how I do it. Don't do this too hard. And, you know, maybe kids don't try this at home kind of thing, but to get the pitch of a stick, uh, <laughs> tap it against your head and you can, yeah. I can hear it perfectly. You guys probably can't, but so this 5A I have, doom, 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 about right there. This is about doom, doom, doom. So they're, they're totally different pitches. Um, now, if I take the other, the matching matching pair they're they're i did not plan this uh they're they're identical yeah uh because those that was a pair that came off the line and they were perfectly pitch paired mm-hmm. uh so a lower pitch they, they definitely sound different when you strike them on a surface they're going to sound different but i think honestly with the, the pitches um a lot of time it's it's the feel and the response in addition to the sound that that can change and again a lot of people don't notice that you might grab a pair of sticks and be like why does this just doesn't respond? It just feels kind of like dead. Um, and that a lot of times is because it's a really either light or it's a very low pitched stick. And so, um, you know, nothing against, uh, you know, kind of what we call like second quality sticks. It's sticks that, you know, don't meet certain criteria. So they wouldn't be like a Vic for a stick, but they might be something that, you know, would be uh, sold for, you know, a lower price, things like that. Um, and those sticks obviously have, have a purpose. Um, but if you go and you know get like the, the big bag of sticks at at a at a drum shop, uh, they're typically going to be lighter and lower pitch because they just don't sound and they don't play as well. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. yep. Super yep. interesting. 
yeah, it's like I said, it's just crazy science. Uh, and there's just so much more that goes into, it. you know, I thought it was like, yeah, I'm sure, you know, they, they sand some stuff down, they slap a logo on it and throw it out the door. And it's like, uh, no, there's like years and years and years of painstaking research and, you know, woodology and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it. I don't think that's actually a, a word, but, uh, it is, it is now it is now coined it, um, patent pending, but, uh, yeah, there's, there's just so much that goes into it. Uh, and then I honestly, from there, like the, the pairs, they're, they're perfectly paired. And then they go to kind of this automated sleeving machine where they get put, uh, you know, put into the, the VIC sleeves and they get a laser printed, uh, barcode and actually a little born on date. So if you look at your sticks, you can look and see the exact date that they were made in the factory and then they're packed and, uh, and shipped to a, a drum shop near you. Oh yeah. Look at Watching that. Our music. You see that there's on there? The, yeah. There's even a time that they were born. Yeah, exact, exact. <laughs> what is time that? I didn't know that. <laughs> little mini birth certificate right on the back. Yep. While we're on the topic of the of the pitch, um, Matt yep. was Matt asked, um, does the finish and the coating impact the end result uh, pitch of a stick? Uh, it it might ever so slightly, but I don't think it's anything that you're really gonna gonna notice. I mean, even. Um, you know, and we can talk about this in a bit, like our double glaze line, which which uses, you can see it's kind of extra shiny here. Uh, it uses extra coating or the paint adds that thin layer. It's just really the, the very top coat of that stick. So I wouldn't imagine it has much, much effect on, on the tone or pitch of the stick. I mean, it's definitely not going to compromise it. If you're, if you're yeah, ex yeah, right. Yeah. Right. In the case of the glaze, like you're adding mass, but you're adding mass to both sticks. So yeah, yeah, relative to each other. Uh, Adam, Adam, we're giving yeah. stuff away. Yeah, we're oh, giving stuff giveaway. away. Last chance, last chance to enter. There's probably like a couple, like one minute left to enter. So if you are watching now, uh, that's where you can enter. There's three minutes left. Lots of ways to do it. Don't slouch on this. It's free sticks. We're giving away three pairs of them. Three pairs. Three sets. And you probably don't have these. Three sets. You need them. Three sets, hot. six pairs. Three sets, six <laughs> pairs. Three sets. You get <laughs> two pairs of sticks. The guys just dropped in the comments. Check it out. Click on it. Come back in. We're still talking sticks, but they're free. So yeah. just just check it we out. Yeah, we'll do ship it. them to you. You got three uh, more minutes. So do Mike, it. we kind of we kind of talked a lot about sticks, and we talked about giving uh, these away. This this. This is not what I think of when I think of a stick. What what is this? Tell me about this what? this object. <laughs> what is this, this peculiar implement? this peculiar implement? What do I do implement? with this? What do you do with it? Uh, so many things. Um, you can you can stir pasta with it. With these, you can sweep Ooh. the floor, sweep your, awesome. your computer monitor off. No. Uh, so this uh, this is something that we just introduced in in uh, in January this last year or in in this year uh, at Nam, which feels like a lifetime ago now to be honest um yeah. but uh but yeah so this is our our new series of brushes we you know categorize them as brushes our uh vic Firth remix brushes and so we worked with uh with pete lockett just a brilliant drummer fantastic percussionist and this is yeah. kind of his his brainchild and um you know he wanted you know natural material brushes that you could you know kind of take to, to the next level of creativity. And so there's four models. There's uh, RM1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, and the, the first is this broom, broom corn. It's very, very light, really kind of a feather touch. Um, great for, you know, like really low key jazz, or if you like the sound of very light gauge brushes, but without that kind of harsh wire metal sound, those are, are beautiful, really, really mm -hmm. delicate. Uh, and then the RM2 is African grass. So it's a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, um, mm -hmm. but not too heavy. It kind of gives you just a little more body, a little more volume and attack than the RM1. And then the RM3, so the one you were holding up earlier is, uh, you know, premium birch dowels. And again, really, this this whole set is kind of kind of a you know a gradient of volume and attack. Uh, some solid ninja moves going on there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So there's there's the birch. So again, it's going to be a little bit louder, a little more attack. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have the uh, the RM4, and this is you know a birch and rattan hybrid. And this is. Um, you know, on its own, it's great for like cascara on a, on a timbale or cowbell or kind of a chorus effect even on a, yeah. on a snare drum, which is really cool. Um, but what, what the beauty of these really is and what they're designed to do and why you'll notice they have kind of like a funky 
rectangular shape handle yeah. is these were designed specifically to be mixed and matched and, and paired together. Let me grab my uh, bands here. So each, each pair comes with these, you know, black rubber O-rings and uh, comes with two of them. You just slip them on. And you've got this implement that has different uh, different textures, different sounds, depending on how you use it. Right. And so what's really cool, like I said, you kind of can customize your level of volume and attack depending on how you, you pair them together. That's really the fun part of kind of diving into the creativity of these. So if you like the like softer kind of swooshy sound of the, you know, the brush side, but um, you know, in the in the chorus, you want to switch and get some more definition out of the ride cymbal or play accents on the bell of the cymbal or just get more attack and volume out of the snare drum. You just, you know, flip it over and, and you're good to go. Um, and that's well, kind of Oh, yeah, go ahead. Finding like one of the grass, one of the grass brushes with the more solid like birch or that, yep. that three pronged one. Yeah, would reinforce also reinforce the, the grass a little so you get sort of a like a little little midway point between one and the other. Yeah, absolutely. So the um, kind of the most popular combination and, and why we put it in like a bundle, like combo pack, which is what you guys are mm -hmm. um, so awesomely giving away as the uh, as the big giveaway for this is the RM2 and the RM3. I think that's kind of the most universally appealing uh, yeah. combination. But um, for me, what I've really started to love is, like you mentioned, using the RM4 with the, the uh, RM2. And this is, again, it kind of gives you that that uh, that brush you know, kind of softer sound, but um, on the other side, I'm, just, I'm playing on my hand, a terrible demonstration. But, um, can't you guys hear how good that sounds? Um, but that one has so much versatility because it's like, I'm, I got some attack, some volume, but kind of a softer sound on one side and I flip it over and I'm, you know, playing accents and patterns on, like I said, on the ride cymbal, on the bell of the cymbal, turning it sideways and getting a totally different sound depending on, on how you, how you, you know, orient it. So just a really cool, really fun, uh, series of brushes again, just kind of dive into the the creativity, and um, it was super super fun working with Pete Lockett to 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 put that together and bring that to market. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a uh, it's a fun fun series of brushes. For sure. Yeah, well, I was gonna say too, like don't downplay the 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 hilarity of just like kind of demonstrating them on your hand. The, like <laughs> the cool thing I like about stuff like this is that it makes any surface into a percussion instrument. Yeah, you know, you you like the you know you could take these with you, play on a tabletop, play on a stool, play on a chair, play on your hand, uh, you know, and that you get like a texture to whatever it is you're striking. Whereas you know a stick is very harsh and sharp and right. kind of annoying, you know. But these are like this; they're super pleasing, like having that you know, that chorus effect or like the the all the bristles kind of striking just offset from one another on on, on any surface, whether it's a drum kit uh, or not, like another object that's no, definitely not a coworker or a or a sibling. Um, yeah, definitely no, it's, not. It's that. super cool and super usable. Um, I've I've played gigs just you know with a cajon, but then also having yeah. another object using this, and you know it just it it really does change the texture from something that is kind of either harsh or just lame that a drumstick would produce yeah. to something that is interesting to listen to, uh, and and really you know uh, is a lot more musical. I think. So, yeah, awesome. super, super yeah. useful. Very cool. Appreciate that. Super cool. Now, have you considered attaching them like this to create a double-sided? Double. And then, and then really just kind of go and attach <laughs> Well, uh, so I, mean, I haven't <laughs> until this very moment, but now I'm not going to be able to stop thinking about that. You know, like, <laughs> this whole remix thing just made a whole lot of sense, and my mind is blown. Remix, yeah, just this whole, is way cool. You just guys, I got, I got to make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at Nam, someone was like, "Have you ever tried stacking four of them?" I was like, "No, we have not tried that." that would be <laughs> but, yeah, so there's, I mean, you can. You know, let your creativity run wild, but maybe yeah. maybe not quite that wild. Yeah, no, these are super cool. I I, I was curious what the rectangular because uh, I feel like the, I thought there had to be a conscious position behind that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. You can stack them together like that. That's neat. Yep, exactly. We we explored honestly a lot of different versions of the handle, um, but when it came down to it, being able to pair it quickly and take it apart, put it back together, like that was the best uh, the best option to be honest. And you know, we're we're always you know trying to innovate and try different things and make different tweaks here and there. But um, even for being rectangular, they still like, honestly, they, they have a really great, great feel in your hand, which was, you know, what you'd expect from a, a Vic yeah. product. So, um, but yeah, especially when they're, they're paired together, they just sit really well together. So that was yeah. the idea behind the, the rectangular shaped handle.
But I was gonna say too, it does give you a bit of control, and 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 that without even looking at them, you can tactilely tell the yep. orientation of your your brush and and control that. So you you're always hitting with the broad side if you need to, or a narrow side if you want that. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's cool. Cool. I was gonna ask. I mean, you were talking about stick innovation. Like that, these are super unique and interesting and and super cool. Like, what drives? I mean, you know, you got a wall behind you of a a, a whole. Yes. mess of sticks all yeah. very different like what you know one could think that a stick's a stick but like you guys are are creating all different kinds of sticks all the time right. what drives innovation what makes you come up with we got to make this we got to make this a new thing or this is a, 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 a something that the drumming world needs like how do you how do you how does that work how's how's r&d work in the drum stick world yeah it's uh, so great question and it's uh you know inspiration kind of comes from from all over the place uh the the, really the biggest thing is that the the drummer you know drummers what they what they want what they need should really drive everything we do because we're we're trying to make products and sticks and implements and mallets that um, solve problems for for musicians and for artists and for drummers and so that's you know that's really I think where the biggest part of the, where the funnel starts is okay what what needs do drummers have that are not being filled um, in general or specifically within you know our assortment or our catalog and so we'll absolutely start there and so for like the remix for example if you looked at our catalog we didn't have anything like this um, just from like a natural material style brush but also out in the market there's there's nothing quite like it I mean there there are things individually that use similar materials of course um, but nothing with that kind of that that pairing idea and so yeah so it definitely it filled filled a gap I think for for um, you know musicians and and, and just kind of opened up a different door of, of creativity. So I think at, at the very base of innovation, it's meeting uh, a need for, for, for drummers and for, for musicians. Um, we also get, and like, like in the case of, of Remix, you know, it, it was an idea that we honed along with, with uh, Pete Lockett. So we get a lot of ideas from, from artists all the time. Um, again, they're, they're out there, not so much anymore, unfortunately, but you know, they're out gigging and playing and night after night and show after show, and they're pushing their craft to the limits. And so they come to us and say like, there's nothing out there that quite accomplishes this. Yeah. And we'll say, yeah, you're right. And so let's, let's kind of work together on that and figure out a solution, uh, that works for you, but you know, could also work for everyone. Cause you're probably not the only person that has that concern or that issue or that need. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and kind of step way, way back, like step, like almost 60 years back. <laughs> um, that is absolutely the kind of the origin story of Vic Firth in general, you know, Vic yeah. Firth, when he started, you know, also, you know, just level set, a lot of people don't realize this, especially younger drummers that Vic Firth was actually a person. <laughs> he was, uh, in a phenomenal musician. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so he started making sticks, uh, you know, by himself because there just wasn't anything out there. It was out of sheer necessity to have a better tool to yeah. get, you know, what was in his his mind and in his soul mu musically uh, out, you know, through his hands, through his implements and through his instruments. And so um, we're still doing that to this day. I think that legacy very much lives on of letting necessity drive innovation. It's a mother of invention. Did I just make that up? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were talking about the artist, you know, artist sticks, like what, how does the yeah. artist process happen? Like, what's that like? And then you have yeah. a whole series of artists, artist sticks that you guys have. We do. Yes, absolutely. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really cool process and, and it kind of goes back to like what we were just talking about. It really starts with a, a need, like a creative need. You know, what do I want out of this stick? What sound, what feeling am I missing that I'm not getting from what else is out there? And so Typically, an artist will come to us and they'll ask those kind of questions and say, you know, what what can we do? Or I have X Y Z idea, and then uh, so myself, artist relations, the artist of course, as well as our core product development team uh, up in Newport, Maine at the the factory, we'll we'll meet live, you know, meet virtually like this and these days, and we'll we'll talk to the artists about their goals, like what what goal do you have for this stick? Um, and oftentimes, there's a, a stick that they are already using that is kind of close that we use as a starting point like a jumping off point as reference to kind of build off of mm -hmm. so like oh i really like the the aj1 but um you know i i kind of think I, I wanted to respond a little bit differently and i needed to be a little thinner and i i like i like this different sound so maybe we can mess with the tip and so we'll kind of have that that back and forth with them and translate what they want in feel and sound and response into you know 
you know, basically binary code and the CAD drawing and the templates and all that kind of stuff that our engineers pull together. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of times there is something we're building off of and, and tweaking, but sometimes honestly, like we're just cooking stuff up from scratch. Uh, there's there's a stick we've been working on recently. I uh, won't divulge too much, but basically is, you know, the something like nothing exactly quite like anything we've done. It's like they were, this artist was using a, a Cutco knife that has this kind of specific contour. And it's like, this might be a really great feeling drumstick. Let's try that. And so, uh, you know, kind of cooking stuff up from scratch because there's, you know, things similar, but not quite to that level that uh, that we've, we've worked on. So anyway, so we kind of have this conversation, we figure out what they want and, and we're all on the same page. And then from that conversation, again, our engineer is going to create a very detailed CAD drawing um, that'll get approved by, you know, our team, the artist, of course. And then from there, we uh, we work on, you know, getting a template, creating a prototype, you know, running a handful of pairs for for the artist to, to react to. Um, and from there, essentially, it's this kind of back and forth continuation of that conversation as we dial in the specs. And, you know, artists might say something like, oh, that feels really good, but I, I want more rebound. Um, and so we'll talk through, okay, well, if we maybe lengthen the taper and thin out the neck, that'll give it that response you're looking for, just, you know, as an example. Um, so really it's it's kind of like a very very educated trial and error between the development team and the artist uh, until we get exactly what they want yeah well it has to be a real challenge because you know it's it the artists don't design sticks so all they can really give you is just i need it to be heavier faster more exactly. balanced this way and you know you're just like all right well okay try this <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? and that's and you're yeah. you know you're you're exactly right and it's yeah. kind of like you got to speak the um, the language of the artist and be able to translate that into what does that mean for the actual design and the profile of the stick. And yeah. that's really the the genius of, of the product development team. I want to give a shout out to the, the whole, you know, the whole team up in, up in Newport and Maine from production to everything design development, they're a fantastic team that I have the pleasure of working with on a daily basis. But that's the genius of, of that team is being able to translate what the artist is saying and, and what they mean into how that actually turns into you know little small tweaks by you know one sixteenth of an inch in the length and the taper and all that kind of stuff to make that come alive where the artist is like yep you nailed it that's exactly what i didn't say that but that's that's yeah. what i wanted so perfect this is what i needed <laughs> yeah, that's what i needed i didn't even yeah. know it but yeah exactly so that's that's the the uh the, the challenge the the fun yeah. challenge that we have yep who so whose idea then was it to come up with a 17 inch drum set stick how did that uh, happen? Who, who was yeah. like, I need a, I need like three miles of extra reach. Just, Can you make that happen? I, yeah, <laughs> I, I want to just lean way back. And yeah. Do yeah. Um, um, so, cause, yeah. Cause like Questlove, I think had, had, he was the original long boy stick. Um, yep. And then I, you know, these aren't obviously exactly the same, but the, I feel like they're very similar uh, in, in idea anyway, just a hyper long, super long reach, long taper. Yeah. Um, can you speak to like what the development was like for these and who was involved yeah. with it? Yeah, for sure. So, um, so the actual, the bulk of the development was a little bit, uh, before, before my time. Um, oh, okay. Cause this, that, that product launched at the very beginning, I guess, end of, of 2018 into 2019. So we're kind of yeah. right when I was coming into the, the company. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's 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 an awesome awesome series of sticks because it's it's mm -hmm. really different than what else is out there. And you're exactly right. You mentioned Questlove, so um, his stick is 17 inches, but it's incredibly thin. It's not the thinnest, but one of the thinnest models yeah. in our entire catalog. Mm -hmm. um, but but people, man, people love that stick, and it's 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 really unique, and it's it's a great stick for you know, especially for being so thin and so long. Um, but we we you know it's one of those things we were talking about before where you see a need or you see a trend as you know consumers uh you know and, and drummers it's like okay the average 5a is 16 16 inches long um but more and more we're selling extreme 5a so 16 mm -hmm. and a half and then oh Questlove stick is amazing it feels great it's a full 17 inches and a lot of our marching sticks are 17 inches and maybe there's something to that and so you know that was kind of the the impetus of of the freestyle series is full 17 inches. Um, but not only that, what makes the freestyle special is yes, the length for, you know, reach and leverage and all that, but um, also the, the taper is quite a bit longer than the average stick. Um, yeah. And that's, that's significant because the taper, the longer taper combined with that extra length, it essentially, you know, it doubles that, that sweet spot of the fulcrum. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so you can you can hang way back and get all that reach and leverage without losing a ton of like response. Yeah. Or you can choke up when you really need to and get some really great balance and rebound. It's just a really versatile stick. And people just, again, that was kind of the need or the trend is people wanted longer and longer sticks. So like, yeah, let's let's give it to them. Let's max it out at, at 17 inches. And so, um, yeah, so that, like you said, it's it's similar lengthwise to um, to Quest stick, but uh, we the overall diameters are in line with some of our most popular models. So you've got the 5A, 7A, 5B, 55A, and 85A, but all 17 inches long with a really long taper. Yeah, no, I, and I I just remember like I was you know I've been selling drums and sticks and yada yada for years now, and I, yeah. I remember when the Questlove sticks first came out, and we like we're selling left, right, and center. And it wasn't even like a week or two before guys would come back and be like, these things are rad. Yeah. Or is there anything thicker? Like, I want that. I want that 18 mile long reach on the kit. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, but you're right. Like, you know, for guys coming from a 5A, 55A, 5B to the Questlove, it's, it's like a chopstick almost by comparison. It is, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's, so, it's so thin. Yeah. And it's cool. Like, cause like now that the freestyle is out and you have that 5B, grip size the 55a grip size you, you know all these all these gospel and metal dudes are just like just just piling in and dropping <laughs> the one of your fills and the blast beats left right and center and yeah, yeah that's super cool <laughs> yeah that's yeah it's, it's a it's a great series and i'm just like we're we're super thrilled that again that we're we're meeting that need that that wasn't being met and, and drummers are, are loving it it's great yeah that's super cool yeah. um adam do you want to pop in with something I'm just, I'm having a great time. Oh, I, okay. All right. <laughs> keep it going. I know that you guys have a couple other series of sticks that, that are kind of newer in the, in the world of sticks, the signature series. Yeah. Um, you know, tell, what's, what's the latest in the world of Vic Firth? Yeah. So I'll, I'll lay it out. So, um, right, right now, like we don't, we don't have anything super new in the, in the signature series, but I guess kind of piggybacking on the, the conversation about just the process of going through, um, going through what, you know, what the development looks like for a signature product or a custom product for an artist. You know, we have, you know, it's like 40 or 50 uh, models in the signature series. So just, you know, incredible variation, kind of unique one-off things, whether it's the, you know, the, the profiles or even like the finishes and things like that. So, you know, um, if you, if you love Steve Gadd or Dave Weckl or Benny Grab, all these guys, you know, um, there's, there's kind of what goes on in their mind translated into a drumstick. Uh, and so it's just really, really fun, really cool. My, uh, you know, my, I'm a little, little biased. My personal favorite stick in our entire catalog, kind of my go-to stick is, is the Jojo Mayer signature stick, which it's a little different. It's like one of the shortest and one of the lighter sticks in our entire catalog, but man, there's something about it. When I got my hands on that stick, like the light bulbs were going off. And so um, people, I think a lot of times forget about the, the signature series. And just because, you know, maybe, Maybe, you know, JoJo's not your favorite drummer ever. I mean, I happen to love JoJo Mayer. I love his playing. And that's kind of why I tried the stick in the first place. But people, I think, kind of uh, sleep a little bit on the Signature Series because, um, you know, it's not like a traditional model. They're kind of different and funky. But if, if you're looking for something new and try to try something different that is kind of more of a, a one-off, that it doesn't exist out there anywhere else, check out the Signature Series and go look at the specs on the website and um, and see if there's something that, that piques your interest because there's a lot of of unique options there for sure. Yeah. What I would say too, when I like, I think the signature series is great. Like it, it, here's, here's, here's an example of why the signature series is great. Even if you don't like the artists or you don't listen to their music or whatever. Yeah. If you're ever in a rut and you're just like, I, I'm not really feeling inspired. I pick up just a weird, <laughs> weird, pick up the Jojo Mayer sticks, pick up the yeah. quest. Yeah. Hi, super long and thin, real delicate and short and, and sit down and play. And you'll just be like, wow, yeah. what, what is this world and how like it, and it's like it's worth so many times i i can't play i couldn't play a single jojo mayor lick to save my life but you pick oh, up yeah, those little same. those little sticks and you're, you're just doing your usual thing it's like it, it you think about the instrument differently you think about how you your playing changes yeah. um and yeah it's it's just it's like listening to a brand new artist you know just yeah. playing with a brand new set of sticks and it's it's cheap you know would do yeah. you want to buy like an 800 dollar snare or a four no just buy an eight dollar, nine dollar set of sticks, and yeah, just and you, you're set for like a month. You got a whole new world to open up to you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really that's a really great point, and it's something that kind of blows people's minds. Is we when freestyle came out, we do this demonstration where it's like, here, here's a pair of five A's. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I get that. Okay, 
here's a pair of extreme five A's. Oh yeah, that, that half inch, that doesn't make a difference. Here's a yeah. pair of freestyles. And it's yeah. like, oh, what? <laughs> and you just feel this extreme difference. So you're exactly yeah. right. I think, you know, and I, I've had this experience and it's something that I'm trying to figure out how to help other drummers have that experience too, where, you know, you, you're not just buying and using whatever stick. You, mm -hmm. Like you guys talked about at the beginning of the, the, the live stream, it's so, your stick is so essential to your playing and your sound. And until you have, I think that kind of aha light bulb moment, you don't necessarily appreciate how important the stick is to your playing. So I mentioned the Jojo Mayer stick. I was using, you know, kind of mix and match sticks and, you know, all Vic Firth typically like 85A here and there, like whatever. Um, and then, like I said, I, I picked up a pair of Vic or of uh, Jojo Mayer sticks, just like you said. And, uh, and it was like, holy cow, like I'd never played the drums before. It was just, like, <laughs> it was all new and it was really, really inspiring. And yeah. uh, it's kind of, I just felt like right at home with those sticks. And I, I love them. It's, just, it's, it's, it's amazing. But yeah, so yeah. really, really cool. Very good points on the, the signature series, just to kind of shake it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess to, uh, to, to move uh, to some of the other series that are, you know, have some, some new things going on. So um course we've kind of touched on this a bit but feel is you know of course one of the most important things to drummers and mm -hmm. um, feel isn't just the balance of the stick it's it can also be the finish like the finish can really affect the feel and how you play and how comfortable you are and so we have two series um that are you know reasonably new that uh, each have a very distinct feel so i guess first i'll, I'll talk about the uh, the pure grit series so um this is a a, a series that is completely unfinished unlacquered no lacquer at all on them uh, has this kind of raw almost textured feel and uh in addition to just not being finished or lacquered we actually do a separate um you know special kind of sanding light sanding process to get them to feel the way that they do and um it's it's really good if you know if you really want to just like connect to your stick and it kind of breaks in over time as the you know kind of the, the the oils of your hand get into the stick um it's just a really really cool unique feel sometimes you know people say oh i have really sweaty hands and like mm -hmm. this works really well and it's not like if you don't have sweaty hands you can't use it but it's just one example of of people that have found you know again found kind of felt at home with with that yeah, well, and drummers all over the world too that that have come in here. The first thing they do when they get a new set of sticks is they go home, get out the sandpaper, yeah. and just go buck wild on the grip end of the stick to get all that all that. Whether it's a heavy lacquer or it's just a real thin, like you know, uh, mild stuff that you put on the regular sticks. That's the first yeah. thing they do because yeah, they don't want it on there. Now you have a stick from the factory that feels like that every time. Yep. It's perfectly balanced, perfectly straight, perfectly weighted, everything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, pure, pure is, um, is, yeah, it's great. You know, if you're, if you're looking for that, that kind of feel. Um, and so, um, and I'll, so I'll talk about next is the, uh, the double glaze series. So it's the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, so we actually use additional layers of our, you know, specialized lacquer formula on the, the, the double glaze. You can tell right away, it's got a little bit of a, a gloss, a little bit of a sheen mm -hmm. to it. Um, and that's what this does is it, it gives you a, a little bit more of a grip. It's a little bit more of a tackiness to it. You know, when you need a little bit of extra grip, it's not as extreme as say, you know, the actual like rubberized Vic grip series or anything like that, but um, it's just a little something extra. It kind of, it sort of harkens back to that, uh, that like classic jazz type of finish stick. Um, of course it's very playable and applicable for every other genre, but it kind of has that, that classic feel. And um yeah, across so across both pure grit and double glaze when we launched them uh, a year or two ago uh just available in 5a and 5b but again you talk about you know how innovation is driven and it being driven out of the needs of drummers um we were like constantly getting uh comments on our social media and all that kind of stuff of when are you going to come out with more sizes for pure grit when are you gonna come out with more sizes for double glaze and so it literally got to the point where like okay we gotta we gotta give the the people what they what they want and so we um earlier uh, or i guess late last year expanded both the pure grit and double glaze series to have not only the 5a and 5b but also the extreme 5a extreme 5b and 7a so there's five models available now across or in uh, in both series so 10 models total across both series yeah we were really glad to, to see that because we got we got the 5a and the 5b pure grits in and in our first the first thing we thought was like oh geez first question i'm going to get is do you guys have any extreme 5a yeah. pure grits yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly yeah so thought we'd help you guys out and, and yeah. create a whole new whole new series of sticks there for you but yeah 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 in the same vein of just extending a line uh yeah. van chom was asking if you guys are going to do any more tip tip options in the freestyle line 
Yeah. So, you know, we get, that's another one where it's like, okay, a need drives, drives innovation. Um, we, uh, we, t- we talk about that all the time with, uh, um, not to tip the hat too much, but with, you know, double glaze, pure grit, as well as, as freestyle people asking for not just different tip shapes, but, you know, we're going to do it and we're going to do it in nylon and things like that. Cause that's a whole, you know, it's a whole nother, whole nother game, a whole nother sound. Um, yeah. but yeah, so it's, uh, um, don't have anything, hard planned at the moment, but it's something we, we definitely consider. And the more and more people talk about it, the more and more it's like, okay, maybe we, maybe we need to get on that. So yeah, definitely something we, uh, we talk about. The possibilities are endless. Now I realize it now that you could literally do a million trillion things and it's going to be, it's, it all could play to someone that has a need for something that's my mind's blown. Yeah. Yep. yeah and no idea. I was like, Sam, what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about sticks today? My mind is blown right now. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, these are don't, this is the most important thing. This is it. This is the whole deal. <laughs> well, don't worry, Adam. We could talk about sticks until oh we gosh. are blue in faith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is just the first hour. We're, we're here for another six. <laughs> <laughs> the, extended, the extended live edition. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I honestly like it's. Uh, cause this is, this is, uh, you know, this is my job and sometimes I can't believe it. Cause I, I could, I could sit here and talk all, all night with you guys about this stuff and just geek out about it. But yeah. And it's, you know, to your point about like one minor change can, can make a huge difference in the feel and response of the stick. That's, that's why we have so many models of sticks because every little change, every little difference, um, it's, it's important to that drummer that, uh, that is looking for that. So, um, yeah. And we, we kind of pride ourselves on on uh, being able to meet the needs of as many, many drummers as possible. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's, it's, it's a super great thing to have. So I, you know, there's a lot of people, myself included that just, you know, every, every couple of weeks. Oh, yep. Give me some more, give me some more five B's. You want to try yeah. anything cool? Sam? No, nah, not nah, just the five nope. B's. I'm but, happy. but again, like you, you're going to get into that point where it's, you either get bored or get frustrated or, you know, you just need a, need a change of pace. Yep. And then and then you look at the Vic Firth catalog and there's thousands of changes of paces that you could possibly have. And they're yeah, they're all great. You pick up a pair. It's it's awesome. Super inspiring. Um yeah. Such a simple way to just completely change your whole take on the drums. Like change mm-hmm. your drum heads can be probably I'm imagining I'm not a drummer, probably pain in the ass to like change your drum heads all the time. Yep. Pick up a different set of sticks and you get a whole different feel and play and life to what you're doing. It's awesome. It's super yeah. cool. Well, and it could also, it could reignite like a purpose for a symbol you haven't or like a ride that you haven't played in a long time. You get a stick with a new tip. Yeah. You get a stick that's lighter, longer, you know, what what a you know, what have you. All of a sudden that ride that collected dust for the last four years is your is your go to, right? Yeah. Um, I, I totally agree with you. And I think like you're saying for like an established drummer or someone that's been playing for a while and is, you know, like you mentioned, like kind of in a rut or just looking to kind of spark or ignite some creativity. Yeah, like just try something, you know, totally different, totally out there and see what, you know, creative possibilities and creative avenues it opens up. Um, I will say too, kind of the opposite of that for, um, for drummers that are just starting out. Um, it can be, it can seem like super overwhelming <laughs> to yeah. look at the Vic Firth website and look at, you know, look at, you know, go to the store and see this giant wall of, of stick in front of you. It's like, what the heck do I do? Yeah. Um, but uh, I, you know, we're, we're, we we want to kind of help people understand that it, it shouldn't be intimidating or, or overwhelming. I get it can be, but uh, just try and get excited about like all the possibilities that there there are, and mm-hmm. uh, just know that like because there are so many options, like if you keep plugging away at it, you're like you're gonna find the pair that just all of a sudden makes you just lock in, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like your your performance, your playing, your connection to the music, and the your bandmates, and the you know everything is just locks in, and it's like okay. This, that's why I, I struggled through, you know, 18 different models of sticks to find this one. Cause now it's like, okay, I'm home. Yeah. And it can also be a way to reaffirm that the stick you have been using is, is the one you could go exactly. somewhere yeah. else and be like, okay, that was cool. But now I really know for sure that, yeah, I, I had the right stick. I'll get more of those. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you should give relationship advice. That was brilliant. <laughs> 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 spot on man all right i'll write a book sam burtness <laughs> and my relationship with my five b's <laughs> well, let's let's change some people's drumming lives right now and change their yeah. playing give away yeah. some some remix brushes and oh, yeah. let's do this thing let's Three give them away pairs. so without further ado we're giving away three sets six pairs three sets yep guys behind the scenes show us the winners who do we got? We got Evan S. from Denver. Evan. You're winning some sticks. Congrats, we Evan. got 
Griselda, you're winning sticks. West we got oh, one other person, you. Lisa from Charleston. Congratulations to all three of you. Yeah. We will hit you up tomorrow. We will get your address. We will send you these sticks. We will change your life. You have no idea. It's just going to be <laughs> – Sam will tell you. Your life is going to change. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, congrats, everyone. Enjoy those, enjoy those brushes. Well, Mike, thank you so much. I this has been eye opening. My life is compl- my life has changed. Um, I've learned a ton. I want to do this again because I know there's if the catalog is that deep, there's a lot of things to talk about in the world of drumsticks. A lot of things we can explore and play with and do kinds of stuff with and check out. So there's all kinds of colors behind you that we even talk about. So like I know there's a lot there's a lot to, a lot oh, to yeah, deal with in the world of drumsticks. It, it so it runs deep. We've got a lot of ground to cover. For it sure. runs deep. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. We appreciate the relationship with Vic Firth and, and everything that you guys do. And um, thank you for sharing sharing the evening with us. And um, we should definitely do this again soon. This is a great time. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everyone, for uh, for tuning in. This is this is a lot of fun. Oh, thank and you. thanks, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Chuck Levin's Live Day. And um, we'll see you next week for another Chuck Levin's Live. And until then, have an awesome week. See you then.